Hello, my name is Julie Fry, and I'm the curator at Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens. 2023 marks the 125th anniversary of the founding of the Goodyear Tired Rubber Company. In recognition of this tremendous achievement, we are going to execute a 10-part video series, which will begin in March and run throughout 2023, one premiering each month. The Goodyear Tire Rubber Company was founded by F.A. and his brother C.W. Cyberling, and F.A. and his wife Gertrude were also the masterminds behind the creation and construction of Stan Hewitt Hall and Gardens. In the first episode, we're going to talk about the founding of the company. In 1898, F.A. was on a business trip in Chicago, and he bumped into an Akron business associate who was in town to try to sell a factory on the east side of Akron. F.A. was traveling throughout the Midwest at this point. He'd formerly been employed by his father's company, the J.F. Cyberling Company, which sold agricultural machinery. During the financial panic of 1893, his father had basically lost everything and gone bankrupt, so F.A. had spent the last five and a half years traveling around the Midwest and trying to resolve a lot of his father's outstanding debts. So when he bumps into this associate in Chicago, for all intents and purposes, he's fairly unemployed, scrambling around trying to figure out what his next move will be. In the course of the conversation where the associate, who is only known as Mr. Gray, is talking about trying to sell this factory, F.A. finds himself actually agreeing to purchase the factory for $13,500. He's headed back to Akron. He has this obligation now that by the end of the week he has to present $3,500 as the down payment for this factory. He has no idea, number one, where he's going to get that large sum of money at this time and what he's going to do with this factory that he's now promised to purchase. From some oral histories and letters, we know that when he returned home, he did two things. One was to talk to his brother, Charlie. He and Charlie really did everything together. They had worked with their father and all of his business adventures together. So he was F.A.'s closest confidant. And he also went to the library and did some research to think, if I were to open a factory, what would I want a manufacturer? We know that he talked about one of his early ideas was to possibly have a paper factory, but he decided there wasn't really a lot of versatility in that project. Yes, while everyone needed paper, it seemed like a safe choice. Maybe it wouldn't really allow for a lot of creativity. So the second idea that we know that they landed on was rubber. He and Charlie's father had actually owned a rubber company, the Akron India Rubber Company, and Charlie had worked for that company for some time. And there also was the Goodrich Company, which was well established in Akron. And there was a large group of individuals who lived in Akron who had familiarity with the rubber business, both kind of in the white collar jobs as well as the factory workers. So F.A. and Charlie considered that there were people that they could pull from and hire that would have the knowledge to help them get this company started and that potentially rubber had a future, that there was an opportunity to be versatile, to be creative, and to be innovative, which was something that really appealed to both F.A. and his brother. So they went and visited their brother-in-law, a man named Lucius Miles, and he agreed to loan them $3,500. So they were able to make that down payment. The next date that we see is in May 28th, 1898, where there's a warranty deed signed between Henry Manton, who's actually another brother-in-law of F.A. and Charlie, for about 12 acres of land in East Akron, and that's the purchase of that Akron Woolen and Felt Company from Mr. Gray. So they start to raise money. They need capital, of course, if they're going to start their business. So it really only takes a short time. By August, they have sold 900 shares of common stock at $100 a share, so they have $90,000 at their disposal and the business is officially incorporated as of August 29th, 1898 under the name The Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. And a lot of people do ask why didn't they name it the Cyberling Rubber Company after themselves? And we don't really have a clear understanding of how that conversation evolved amongst the Cyberling brothers, but we do know later they referenced the fact that they just wanted to kind of recognize Charles Goodyear who was an inventor who lived in Connecticut in the mid 19th century. It was not someone that they had ever met, but Charles Goodyear was a scientist and he was the first one to formally vulcanize rubber and stabilize it in a way that it could be used as a product for all the different things that it was then used for, jewelry making, furniture making, as well as tires, small goods. And it became a very versatile project because of the work that Charles Goodyear accomplished. So they wanted to kind of pay recognition to this inventor who, because of his work, enabled them to start their business. So most of the original stockholders were actually family members. It very much started out as a small family business, as a lot of small businesses do. Both CW and FA's wives were large stockholders, as well as several of their brother-in-laws. Again, we see Henry Manton's name pop up. 
Lucia Smiles, and then Gertrude's brother, R.C. Penfield. And then also supporting it was the Hill family. The Hills were a very wealthy family. They were in the ceramic tile business. They owned the Hill Sewer Pipe Company. So David, George, his wife, Alice Hill, were all also subscribers. And again, these were just those financial backers that the Cyberlinks needed to get their company started. So their first recorded sale was made December 1st, 1898, so not too long after incorporation. They sold mostly carriage and bicycle tires. Automobile tires were still kind of a little bit out of their realm of possibility at that point when they first started as well as making some small mechanical goods, heels for shoes, tubing, belts, those kind of things were also early products that were made by Goodyear Tire & Rubber. In the first year, they had sales of just over $500,000 with a profit of 34,000 621. They were off to a really successful start. So those first 18 months, things went very, very well and it looked like their business was kind of getting settled and getting established. They were building a client base, they were getting their name out there, they started to advertise and were taking all those necessary steps to make their company a success. This concludes the first part of the 10-part video series. Please join me next month where we continue to share tidbits and insights into early Goodyear history.